muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about gears and pulleys. Now these are some of the simplest mechanical elements out there, and they're some of the handiest. We see them absolutely everywhere. The gears and pulleys basically do two things. They change rotational speeds, and they also change torques and moments. Now that seems a little abstract, but I bet all of you have had experience with this in the form of a bicycle. Now, a bicycle works with sprockets and chains, not uh, pulleys and belts, but they work the same way. Just think of a chain as a, as a belt that won't slip. And if you look at most bicycles, they have a big sprocket in the front and a smaller one in the back. And what that does is that allows you to go a little faster as you pedal. But a lot of bikes, like this one, have a whole bunch of uh, sprockets on the back and sometimes a couple more on the front. So what's that do for you? Well, if you've ridden one of these bikes, if you're trying to go fast on a, on a flat surface, flat road, you want the big sprocket in the front and the little one in back. If you're trying to climb a real steep hill, you want the littlest one you got on the front and the biggest one you got on the back. What that allows you to do is just go straight up the side of that hill. You can climb a wicked steep hill with one of those. Now, you have to give something up, and that's speed. You're going to go up that hill, but it's going to take you a while. Your speed is going to go down. Now another example of pulleys that's maybe a little harder to notice is continuously variable transmissions. The pulleys are all on the inside so you don't see them. But here's a cutaway of a continuously variable transmission from a car. I believe this one's from GM. And it's got two pulleys and they have this interesting feature that by changing the width of those little cones you see in there, you can change the effective radius of the uh, pulleys and you can change the gear ratio to be anything you want. So it's not like a regular transmission where you have fixed gear ratios defined by the gears in it. The uh, pulleys can change to be whatever uh, radius they want. So with that, let's run a problem. So what I've got here is a very simple system. This little uh, pulley is being driven. It's got a moment of 100 Newton meters applied to it. Well, where, what's, what's driving it? Oh, who knows? A motor, a, uh, engine, a whole bunch of people pedaling. Who knows? Something like that. Um, and it's, it's in turn driving this larger other pulley through this belt that we assume is, doesn't slip and it doesn't stretch. So there's no slipping and the belt is what we call inextensible. It doesn't stretch along its, its length. So we've got a 100 millimeter radius there and a 250 millimeter radius there. Now, if you look at a pulley, that 100 millimeter radius, 200 millimeter diameter, the pulley's probably bigger than that. It's got some, some, guide, some sides that kind of guide the belt. This is what we call the effective radius. That's where the belt contacts the pulley. There may be more metal outside of that, but that's the part that matters. That's the number we need. So given all this stuff, let's find M2, the moment applied back to this uh, larger pulley, and then the speed at which that larger pulley turns. All right, so given find, let's see, solution. The big idea that makes this work is that these uh, uh, belts are tangent to the surface or the, the contact surface on the uh, pulley. And if you draw a, a line from the center of the pulley right to where it contacts that tangent, that's a radius. So radius and the tangent are perpendicular to each other. And since this is inextensible and all that, the tension in the belt right there is the same as the tension in the belt right there. The way I've got this drawn, this pulley is uh, moving counterclockwise, and so will this one be. So this side of the belt is in tension. This one's trying to be in compression, but just like you can't push a rope, you can't push a belt. So mechanically, this really isn't even there. It's just coming around again to, to uh, go around the pulley. It's just returning to a position where it can actually be of use. So this side is in tension, and even more specifically than that, it's applying you know, equal and opposite forces to these pulleys. and it's the same on both ends. So T there equals T there. Well, let's see, tension, force acting at a perpendicular distance. I'm thinking moment, how about you? Let's do this. M1 equals T times R1, and M2 is T times R2. All right, and we know the tension is the same in both places. I don't actually need to know the tension. It's not asked for in the problem. So let's, let's try something here. Let's divide through by radius. Well, 
I divide through by radius on both of them. Let's see. So if they both equal tension, they must equal each other, right? So I can do this. There. Now, what am I looking for? Well, I'm trying to solve for that. So let's write this out here. That's it. That's all there is to this. And so this is that mechanical advantage. Oops. Wow. This is that mechanical advantage that uh, you keep hearing about. R1 over R2 turns out to be just a constant, a multiplier, that you multiply by the uh, uh, given moment right there. Right? So if you know the sizes of the two pulleys, you know the mechanical advantage. In this sense, it works just like a lever. And mathematically, it is a lever. So let's put some numbers in here. Okay, so 250 over 100. Now I can leave those in millimeters. Normally I would work in, in base units. Normally I'd convert those to meters. But since it's the same numerator and denominator, they just cancel out. And so I get 250 newton meters. There's my answer. And so this is done exactly what maybe your intuition says. You put 100 newton meters in that end, and you get 250 newton meters out that end. Well, that's amazing if that's what you want. It doesn't come for free. So we've done this. Now we've got to find N2, which is the, the rotational speed back there. All right. Well, let's, let's try the same kind of, of logic here. I'm going to erase this. And so just like the tension is the same there and there, the tangential velocity is the same there and there. So let's, try, let's, let's change this a little bit. Because that belt is inextensible, one, one part of it is moving the same speed as another part, V1 has to be V2. Okay? The velocity, tangential velocity of, the, of each pulley has to be the same because they're connected by something that isn't stretching. Well, how do you express velocity as a function of rotation? And let's see. And let's see. V2 is omega 2 R2. All right. Now, omega is in radians per second, and this is in, you know, I gave it to you in revs per minute, but that's just a units problem. We'll fix that here in a minute. Well, we know V1 and V2 have to be the same because they're connected by an inextensible belt. So that means that omega 1 R1 is omega 2 R2. No problem. Which one of these are we trying to solve for? Well, I need n2, but that's basically omega 2 with a multiplier on it. So omega 2 is, OK, there. No problem. So now we've got that same multiplier in front of this, only now it's inverted. So whereas before we had a 2 and a half to 1 increase in uh, velocity or in moment, now we're going to have a two and a half to one decrease in uh, rotational speed. And just to uh, put some numbers to it here, now that's a hundred. Well, that's in revs per minute. Well, I need radians per second. Let's see if I got enough room to fix that here. One minute is 60 seconds. And I can do this because one minute is 60 seconds. I'm multiplying through by one. And let's see, uh, 2 pi radians equals 1 rev. So let's see, so that cancels out, that cancels out, that cancels out. OK, great. So 2 pi over 60 or pi over 30 is the conversion factor. Well, it turns out it's the same thing on the other side. So it's n2 times also 2 pi over 60. Can move that over a little bit. There we go, that's better. So this and this cancel out. So n2 is just one, or well, one over two and a half, 100 over 250 times 100. And I think if I did that right, that gives you 40 revs per minute, 40 RPM. Right? So we got a two and a half times increase in moment and a two and a half times decrease in speed. Okay, like I said, this isn't magic. It doesn't, this, this thing here doesn't get to make energy. It just transmits it. So this is the pulley part 
I, I mentioned gears. Where, where's that? Well, I think let's fix that too. Let's draw this same thing, only instead of having a belt go between them, let's just put them in contact with each other, because that's how gears work. That's not too bad. All right, now, these radii now become what's called effective radius. If you look at a gear, there's a section of one gear intersecting with a section of another one. Okay, there's, a, there's parts of a gear, I guess. There's one gear, there's the other one. They contact each other like right there. In fact, if you look at how gear teeth are, are manufactured, they're pretty sophisticated sometimes. So what we're looking at, this radia, radius here, refers to the point at which those two things contact one another. The gear's probably actually a little bigger than its effective radius. It about has to be. And uh, now instead of uh, uh, belt tension being the same between them, now we just say the contact forces are the same between them. So the force uh, pushing this way on one gear is equal and opposite to the force pushing the other way on the other gear. And again, of course, the, velo the tangential velocities are the same too because they're in contact with each other and not slipping. So gears and pulleys are mathematically just about the same thing. One exception though, this gear is moving that way and because this one's in contact, if this one's moving counterclockwise, that one has to move clockwise. This, they both get to move the same direction. So there you have it. There's how to think about gears and pulleys, how to uh, calculate velocities and mechanical advantages. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.